some more retro. Today's episode is the very first uh, episode in my CD music collection series. Someone had actually requested this, um, I think last month, and um, I want to go look up the comments again of the person who requested it, but I couldn't find it. I, it seems like either they deleted it or for some reason YouTube deleted it. I know they do that sometimes, but anyway, to whoever you are, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, so like I answered in my last, I think, Q&A video that uh, I mostly listen to heavy metal growing up in my teenage years, so most of my collection is heavy metal. And if you don't like heavy metal, that's okay. Um, just sit back and relax and enjoy the whispers. And you may also learn something as well. But now actually I just want to say I also listen to any, pretty much any kind of music that um, I find enjoyable, not just heavy metal. Alright, so I thought the first um, band that I want to show you um, is Metallica and the reason is because they're the band that got me into heavy metal um, they're I guess really the first metal band that I heard and um, that normally I'd go in order in terms of release date for the albums but I wanted to start with this album the black album yes this is actually a CD even though you can't really see much on the cover um, this is Metallica's black album I believe released in 1990 or 91 uh, and I want to start with this one because this was the first Metallica album I heard and this is the album that started it all for me in terms of liking heavy metal um, I think I was in grade 8 at the time so I don't know 12 or 13 years old and I wasn't really into music like I didn't really care that much about music at the time and then I remember it was the last day of school before Christmas vacation Christmas break and the teacher, teacher just let us do pretty much whatever we wanted so uh, my friend brought in a tape of Metallica and probably the first song I heard was Anther Sandman I'm guessing and as soon as I heard it I was like whoa like what is this I, I need more of this it was kind of like it was exactly what I was looking for but I didn't even realize I was looking for something you know um, I just like the edginess of it the I don't know what it was this, um, it just really connected with me, so, and then I, of course, later went out and picked up my own copy, and it just started from there, and then I eventually got all the, their albums, and I started getting into other forms of metal, um, heavier forms of metal, death metal, all that kind of stuff, so this was really what sparked it all. So, as you can, and this was also the album that catapulted Metallica to becoming the biggest heavy metal band on earth a um, few more things I want to say about that is in grade 8 um, at least where I lived in my school uh, I wasn't very popular oh my hands are look so dry should have put some moisturizer or something but anyway um, in grade 8 in my school it wasn't really popular to like Metallica for some reason because um, you know they were pretty big at the time and well they're huge and for some reason that you couldn't like them you know you know how it is and um so I took a lot of abuse from my friends and even family, extended family, cousins and stuff for listening to Metallica. Um, they gave me a really hard time about it. And, you know, I didn't really know much about music or Metallica's history and stuff like that, so I didn't really know how to defend it. So I actually did feel embarrassed to listen to Metallica. And, you know, sometimes my friends would be like, this one guy was like, oh, why do you like Metallica? They didn't contribute anything to music, to the music industry or whatever. And at the time, I didn't know any better. And I'm like, so what? I just like them, which is perfectly valid. But I didn't realize how much they actually did contribute and how many, pretty much every metal band, even to this day, um, was inspired by Metallica. So, And also, um, there was a family member, extended family member, that whenever they came over, or one time they came over and they saw my Metallica CDs and they just gave me this look like, and they actually said, you listen to Metallica and just gave me this look like, you know, I had done something so completely shameful and my biggest regret is that the next time, like for a while, when that, whenever that family member would come over, I would actually hide all my Metallica CDs because I didn't want them to see it. I didn't want to feel that embarrassment, that shame. And I regret that because I should have just said, if you, um, you know, this is what I like and, you know, wear it loud and proud on my shirt, you know what I mean? But I can say this, that family member and many friends um, who made fun of me for listening to Metallica a few years later, they all came to me and wanted to borrow all my Metallica CDs, which I did let them borrow. I could have said, screw you, get the hell out of here, but... I had to be the bigger man and I, I let them borrow it so I guess it all turned out well. 
This is this is their self-titled album, Metallica. That's also known as the Black Album because obviously the, um, the cover is all black. But if you kind of look at the right angle, you can see the Metallica logo on an angle here, and also the um, coiled snake. Don't tread on me, snake. Um, yeah, so let's take a look at the back and the track listing. simple, um, you know, artwork, if you can even call, say that there's any artwork there, there is, you can see the coiled snake here as well. So here's the track listing, Anthro Sandman, number two is Sad But True, number three is Holier Than Thou, number four is The Unforgiven, number five, it, five is Wherever I May Roam, number six is Don't Tread On Me, number seven is Do The Never, number eight is nothing else matters. Number nine is of wolf and man. Number ten is the god that failed. Number eleven is my friend of misery. And number twelve is the struggle within. And it was produced by Bob Rock with Edfield and Aldrich. Bob Rock produced. Um, is also known for producing uh, Guns N' Roses albums, Use for Illusions one and two. He worked with Metallica from this album all the way up to I think Saint Anger was the last one that he produced. And if you don't know Hetfield, this James Hetfield. And well, you'll see anyways. I'll show you the the little booklet inside. So my favorite tracks from this album. It's hard to say because so many of these I, I like a lot of these songs. Like a lot of people say that this is one Metallica sold out, and it's kind of true. I mean, they changed their style significantly um, in this album to be more. I guess you can say radio friendly. Um, you know, the songs are a lot shorter. Uh, there are not so many riff changes and stuff like that. It's just a little bit more digestible for the average audience. But I still think it's a great album. Um, you know, a lot of the songs are catchy. And I think this gets rid of one of my main criticisms of Metallica, even though they're my, f I guess I would say they're my favorite metal band. One of my biggest criticisms is that they have a lot of filler. And a lot of the songs are unnecessarily long, and this album, the songs are short and to the point. Um, not, not like super short, but you know they just get to the point a lot less filler than their other albums, which I think is not a, necessarily a bad thing. Um, yeah, uh, so Enter Sandman, you know, very, you know, I heard that song so many times, like, I, I, you know, it's lost all meaning kind of, but it's a good song, and I really like um, the soul. Actually, that's another thing about this album is the the solos in this. I think are Kirk Hammett's one of his. I think it's his best work in, the, in this album. Um, to be honest with you, the solos look. They sound like he actually took his time and actually planned out the solos instead of just like you know just doing random stuff on there. But um, sad but true is okay. Um, it's a nice heavy, you know, chunky song, but it's a little a little boring um, after hearing it a billion times. It's kind of hard to listen to it now, but I don't know, All Later Than Now is pretty good, The Unforgiven is an awesome song, Wherever I May Roll, classic, um, Do The Never is pretty cool, uh, awesome solo on this uh, um, song, you know, Nothing Else Matters, to me that's the only song that's kind of, I don't think it really needs to be on this album, it just really slows it down for me, personally, it just really drags and it's just monotonous in, in my opinion, but they play this on the radio a lot too, which I'm like, man, that's such a downer of a song to be on the radio. Like, it wants to be that, that sad listening to the radio. But it is what it is. Wolf of Man, pretty good. The rest are just, you know, good songs. They're not, like, amazing, but still really good uh, metallic songs, in my opinion. Yeah, it says you're 1991, so I guess it was released in 91. Now we'll get to their first album, 
sound compared to their later stuff and it was kind of a shock for me to hear how different they um, once sounded uh, but still it's very it has a very classic very raw sound and um, yeah, I just really like it and the only thing I don't like about this album is the vocalist James Atfield uh, is vocal his vocals in the black, like later on in his career in the black album, for example, are amazing, like just really amazing vocals for heavy metal. Um, but here his vocals were more like high pitch and screechy, and I would never think he'd end up being one of the best metal vocalists, in my opinion. Not necessarily the most talented, but just his style of vocals is just very appealing, I guess, for heavy metal. Not so much lately, his vocal cords are shot, so I, I can't really blame him for that, but. Yeah, definitely this album is not his best work in terms of vocals and um, I think a lot of people know the story that Dave Mustaine used to be in this band. Dave Mustaine um, is the frontman for Megadev, but before they released this album, he was like an, one, yeah, I guess an original band member, he was the guitarist, and he wrote a lot of this album, but then they ended up kicking him out of the band for, I don't know, I've heard a lot of different stories about that, but then he went on to form Megadeth, but they ended up still using a lot of his riffs and stuff for this album. Um, he got credit for it, I guess, and he still, I guess he gets paid for it, like royalties and stuff, but... And, um, let's see, my favorite tracks, I mean, there's so many good ones, Hit the Lights, The Four Horsemen, which Megadeth has their own version of The Four Horsemen, they call it Mechanics. It's a lot faster, um, but I, to be honest, I like this version a lot better. A Mortar Breath is cool. Is a bass solo, and um, Cliff Burns an awesome bass player, but I usually skip this. Um, it's just a super long bass solo. It's cool and everything, but how many times can you really listen to that? Um, Phantom Lord, No Remorse is cool. Seek and Destroy, pretty much every track here is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, so I highly re recommend this album. Um, if you want one or more raw sounding album. It shows its age for sure, but it still has a kind of a classic heavy metal sound, I guess. And um, it's funny that um, this band picture here, so there's James Hetfield rhythm guitar vocals. James Hetfield, James Hetfield, Lars Ulrich. wasn't 
a new album because the sound was very, you know, it sounded much older than the Black album, and of course I was right, but, um, so let's see the track listing on the back. Okay, track one is Fight Fire with Fire, track two is Ride the Lightning,
console battery. Um, it's an awesome opening track, very fast thrash song. Awesome stuff. Master of Puppets is absolute classic. Um, it's about addiction. I don't want to specifically say addiction of what. I don't want to be demonetized, but um, and as a kid, I was so bad at it, at um, interpreting lyrics. I didn't realize what the song was about, especially because the cover it feels like those uh, graves and the soldiers' helmet. There, I thought it was about war or something. I guess you could interpret it that way, but now that I read it as an adult, it's so obvious what it's about. Um, yeah, really awesome, awesome classic masterpiece. It's a bit long, 838. Like I said, Metallica will definitely wasn't that happy with long songs. The thing that should not be, I'm not a really big fan of that. Look, I'm almost pretty cool. And I remember reading when I bought this at the store. I was so tired that day because I was walking around. I'm like welcome home and for some reason I read this as Satriani um, as in Joe Satriani the guitarist and I knew that he um, taught Kirk Hammett so I'm like oh wow he does a guest solo on this album or something um, then when I got home I'm like wait a minute that doesn't say Joe Satriani like I'm like how could I make that mistake it doesn't matter what about the album regardless but anyway um, disposable heroes not bad but again does this really need to be Eight minutes and 14 seconds, not really. Hyper Messiah, it's alright, it's got some good riffs, but kind of boring. Um, Orion, amazing, amazing, amazing instrumental. And I don't mind when instrumentals are long, I think they should be long. Um, but yeah, it's just a really good song. And before, when I was reading the track list, I almost said uh, Orion instead of Orion. That's how I used to say the name at the I was kind of dumb, but I'm assuming it's Orion, right? Damn, I don't know. And then finally, Damage Incorporated. Um, awesome way to end the album as well. Um, it's a very fast, thrashy song. They seem to go through a phase where each album ended off uh, with their pretty fast thrash song. I mean, not really. They did that, they did that on a few albums, but overall, I think it's a good album. Um, a little bit too much filler to be honest but the awesomeness of Master of Puppets and Battery and you know, some of the other tracks are just so good that I can overlook the filler and I know some people will disagree and say this is like an absolute classic masterpiece best album ever and that I can see that as well but I just want to point out what for me personally is a little bit too much filler but again that's pretty much uh, in my opinion, a problem that Metallica's always had. And this was uh, released in 1986, it says here. 1986.
that some people say this was out of respect to the cliff burn because, you know, they can't replace them, so they just shut the bass off completely. And people have remixed this album. I don't know if they added their own bass lines to it, but you can hear versions of this album with bass, and it sounds amazing. It sounds that, you know, even without the bass, it's pretty. I still like the album. It's a very heavy sounding album. But with the bass, it's so much better. But anyways, so the track listing is Blackened and Justice for All. I have to be older. One, the shortest straw. Harvester of sorrow. The frayed, frayed ends of sanity. To live is to die. And tires Eve. A lot of good tracks on this one. Um, yes, there's a lot of fillers again, once again, but still a lot of good tracks. Blackened, I think, is probably my favorite uh, song on the album. Um, and just, oh, let me tell you a story about Blackened. So, I remember one time uh, in school, I think I was in grade 9, and we had to do this assignment where we had to bring in a CD uh, and play a song, and then we had to um, explain what the song was about. There's a particular theme to the uh, assignment, I don't remember exactly what it was, but anyways, I chose Blackened, so I brought it in, I pressed play on the radio, and within, like it has a, a slow, uh, reversed, melodic intro thing, but once the actual song kicks in, like with the drums and the, you know, heavy guitar and stuff, literally within five seconds, my, my teacher was like, shut that off right now, and she's like, what the hell was that? She didn't say it like that, but she's like, I can't listen to that. She told me to give her the lyric book, which I did. You know, the little booklet inside, and she read the lyrics in front of the class instead. And at the end, she was like, wow, th those are, like, really awesome lyrics, but too bad, to, you know, the music is garbage. Obviously, I disagree with her on the music part. But, uh, yeah, the lyrics are really cool. Good song. Just thought I'd tell that story. Just the Raw is a really good song, too. 944. I think that's the longest song to date. Definitely, you know, and it's a non instrumental too, so that's insane. A bit on the long side. Uh, let's see, one is a really good song as well. Uh, Harvester of Sorrow, I think, is another one of those overrated songs. It's not that long from by Metallica's then, it's at 542, but it's one of those songs they seem to play live every single show, and I don't really see. It's got some cool moments here and there, but I don't know, it's just kind of a very boring song, in my opinion. The Freight Ends of Sanity. Um, awesome song, probably my second favorite song on the album. Um, yeah, just really cool riffs, cool lyrics, and the solo, and the build up to the solo, and all that. It's just awesome, awesome stuff. To Live Is To Die is an instrumental on it beats. Um, and just for all by four seconds. Um, and a cool instrumental, as always. And I believe lots of mostly instrumental in the middle. Um, there's a like spoken poem, I guess, and like very short, just a few words. And it was, I believe it was actually written by Cliff Burton. So I guess that was their tribute to him. And Dyer's Eve is their last song on the album, which is a Again, a very um, fast, thrashy, energetic song to end the album. So, uh, my opinion, I really like this album a lot. Maybe one of my favorite Metallica albums. I don't think it gets, gets enough uh, love um, that it deserves, but that's probably, again, because they're a bad decision to turn the bass all the way down. But hey, if that was their grieving process, you know, who am I to say anything about that? And I believe this super small writing here says, it was released in 1988, and James's vocals were um, really maturing, I guess, and he was getting there to really, you know, I guess, uh, deep. I don't even know how to explain it, really. I wish I had more better music vocabulary, but it, it was becoming, you know, a, a clear change between this and everything before that, you know. Um, so, yeah, definitely check this one out. I'm pretty much saying that for every album. Okay, so then next up is the Black Album, which I already covered. So now we'll get into the new generation of Metallica, or the next generation, I don't know what you want to call it. This is where things 
remember, this is just my opinion, everything I'm going to say, so if you disagree, that's perfectly fine. These are just my opinions. So after the Black Album, I waited so long for the next album with so much anticipation. And I had to wait years because Metallica just kept touring and 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 touring. But finally, they came where they finally released Metallica Load. And I vividly remember, well, actually, before they, uh, they released the album, I remember seeing or hearing the Until It Sleeps, um, one of the songs from the album, on the radio, and I think the video as well, before the album came out. But on the day it was released, which I thought that you know until it sleeps was okay, but you know, good song, good song. But I remember the day the album came out, I picked it up. And well first let me talk about visually here, okay? You first notice that they don't have the classic Metallica logo and right away that disappointed me. I am not a fan of whatever this logo is. It's got kinda like the TV snow pattern color or whatever texture. Don't like that one bit. The name of the album, Load. Again, that can mean certain things that well, I won't get into it, but I, kinda thought, I always thought that was kind of a dumb name. And it's album cover. Like, what is that? I don't even want to know what that is, okay? I have my ideas, but I don't want to know. It's not an appealing album cover at all, okay? And then you see, like, their, their faces here just kind of weird. I thought that was kind of a weird choice to do. So yeah, not I was not impressed with the packaging. And then you see the band looking very different on the back. You know, with the short hair and stuff. And that's fine, like, you know, there's nothing wrong with changing your hair and cutting your hair, but the clothes they're wearing and stuff like that, I mean, it's just, it's fake. It doesn't look like it's really who they are. It's just like they're posing for a picture. You know, they're, they put on this wardrobe that's not even brought to them, belong to them. And the only guy that looks cool here is uh, Jason because he looks the most natural, you know. But yeah, but let's get. Oh yeah, and then this weird Metallica symbol here. Not really a fan of that either, to be honest. But let's talk about the music. I was very disappointed with what I heard. I'm not saying that the music is bad. It's not, like, technically it's good. From a technical perspective, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of, like, layers and stuff like that, but just the music was not Metallica. It was not aggressive. I didn't get that feeling, that satisfying, aggressive feeling. I, I mean, aggressive in a good way. Um, I just didn't get that, right? So some good tracks on here but like okay let's okay i'll read the track listing first that's what i should that's what i've been doing so i should continue okay so we have ain't my bitch 2.4 the house jack built until it sleeps king nothing hero of the day bleeding me gear poor twisted me wasting my hate mama said song ain't might be again I, I remember being so disappointed when i heard that because i didn't feel that energy you know it didn't ju just didn't do it for me it's not a bad song to be honest with you but not a good way to start the album in my opinion uh two by four i found kind of boring the house jack built i think is a really good song it's probably my favorite one of my favorites on the album until it sleeps is really good Nothing is, is good, it's catchy, it's kind of heavy, but it's a little bit overly catchy. Um, and everything else is kind of forgettable in my opinion. Again, just my opinion, if you like the albums, or the songs on this album, that's good. But I don't know, not, nothing on the rest of the album really does much for me personally. And the songs are like really long, and my opinion, a lot of filler, but I give them credit for trying something different. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I just wish that it felt more like a Metallica album. You know, this could have been like a side project for one of these guys, but I don't know. Just my opinions once again. Oh, and this was released in 96. The next album is... 
similar album cover and you know very similar title just put re before it and once again what is that like I, I don't know what that is um, now once again you got their faces here
Metallica instrumental synths and Justice for All, I believe. And it's awesome, you know, that they're something they're really good at, so I think they should always have instrumentals. Um, the other songs I don't remember too much, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, there's good, there's not so good. You know, it's, it's not a bad album. Um, but definitely their best since the Black Album, in my opinion. Um, if you're looking for that more traditional Metallica sound, that is. If you want something different, then yeah, stick with uh, St. Anger, Load, or Reload. Um, yeah, I wish I could tell you more, but again, I haven't listen to this album as nearly as much as the other ones because by this point like I said I you know I was doing other things with my life didn't have as so much time to dedicate to one particular band one particular album and I do have their latest album hardwired to self-destruct but I don't have a physical copy I just bought it online so I won't be talking about that so um next up Incorporated. Um, this is basically a collection of cover songs that Metallica did throughout the years. Plus, they recorded a bunch of new cover songs for this album. It's a two disc set. Um, I don't consider this to be like an official album, I guess, because it's not original works by Metallica. It's all cover songs. But it's a really good album. Um, if you like cover songs, and Metallica's very well known for doing cover songs, like they're really good at it. And yeah, they do a lot of them, so, and there's a lot of music on this album, a lot of songs. There you can see these pictures here, they look a little bit goofy, but I don't mind that, like they're not taking themselves too seriously, so, I kind of like it. Um, so, disc one, these are the new recordings that were done in 1998. Uh, so there's free speech for the dumb, it's electric. Zabra Cadabra, Turn the Page, Die, Die, My Darling, Loverman, Merciful Fate, Astronomy, Whiskey in the Jar, Tuesday's Gone, and The More I See. And probably my favorite uh, songs from this album are Turn the Page, Die, Die, My Darling, Merciful Fate is awesome. It's a uh, I think they should put together like four or five songs from Merc Merciful Feet into like one, um, what do you call that? Not a melody, a, um, I'm forgetting the word, but it's a compilation, I guess, or there's a word for it, it's not coming to my mind right now, but, um, of Merciful Feet songs, really, really awesome. If you're gonna listen to, you know, one song here, maybe make it that one. And, oh, okay, I'll tell you that later. Anyways, disc two is... Um, there is, where is it? Hopeless, The Small Hours, The Wait, Crash Course in Brain Surgery, the Last Caress, Green Hell, Am I Evil, Blitzkrieg, uh, Bird Fan, The Prince, Stone Cold Crazy, So What, Killing Time, Overkill, uh, Damage Gaze, Stone, something um, and I hope you don't hate me too much if I dis you know if you disagree 